These are my disclosures. The natural history of untreated normal tension glaucoma in terms of mean rate of MD deterioration has been reported by several prospective studies. It was slightly um, slower than that in high tension glaucoma with the mean rate between minus 0.3 to minus 0.4 decibels per year. And you can see there is no ethnic differences. The evidences for IOP lowering treatment in normal tension glaucoma has been reported by CNTGS and EMGT, 30% and 25% respectively significantly slowed down the progression. They also tell us that the progression, um, there some proportion did not progress even without treatment. In CNTGS, beta blockers and adrenergic agonists were not allowed to be used and PGs were not available at the time of the study. In EMGT, IOP reduction was by laser plus metoxolol. Evidence for IOP lowering treatment in NTG um, was, can be um, reviewed by retrospective study as well. It was a long-term follow-up study for 12 years in Korea Upper tertile percentage IOP reduction, which was more than 20%, 22% reduction from baseline, showed a greater probability of non-progression than lower tertile percentage of IOP reduction, which was less than 13% reduction from the baseline. Similarly, um, Japan Group reported the evidence for IOP lowering in maintenance of visual field in progressive normal tension glaucoma patients. This is a recent uh, study by Japan Glaucoma um, Society in NTG patient with mean baseline IOP equal to less than 15 millimeter of mercury without treatment. The probability of progression was in 66% and long-term IOP fluctuation was one of the risk factor of progression. Other factors were disc hemorrhage and greater vertical CD ratio. Habitual IOP peaks may be related with normal tension glaucoma progression. Even though this is a cross-sectional study, worse eye showed higher IOP in supine and worse eye dependent lateral decubitus position compared to the better eye. Further, if the eyeball was compressed in the lateral position against the pillow, the IOP further increased. So if the patient is sleeping in this like prone position, the IOP may be higher. 24 hour fluctuation of IOP can be considered the mean peak IOP was significantly higher during nighttime facing at home compared with daytime facing and clinic IOP measurement by rebound tonometer. 24-hour fluctuation of IOP-related profile measured by contact lens sensor in normal tension glaucoma eye showed greater compared to non-glaucoma eyes, and the peak time was measured mostly at night. Regarding choice of medication, prostaglandin analog or prostamide are the first choice um, due to its uh, strong IOP lowering and IOP stabilizing effect. Brimonidin can be chosen according to the result from logit study. Other medications like topical carbonyl anhydrase inhibitor, selective beta blocker, non-selective beta blocker, and row kinase inhibitor can be used. However, non-selective beta blocker can be used with caution 
because of potential cardiovascular effect. The survey from uh, Canada and US has shown that 68% would initiate treatment in mild to moderate NTG without waiting for documented disease progression. The first choice uh, topical drug was PG analog or prostamide, in most cases followed by bromonidine. Beta blocker was in a very uh, small portion. Similar uh, survey was done in Korean Glaucoma Society members. The first choice topical drug was PG analog or prostamide in most cases, followed by bromonidine, beta blocker, or topical carbonyl anhydrase inhibitor. So PG was um, the, the mostly used uh, uh, first line drug in both surveys, and bromonidine was the second. However, in Korean Glaucoma Society, the proportion of beta blocker and topical carbonyl anhydrase inhibitor was higher. Interesting finding was if the general ophthalmologists are excluded in um, US and Canada study, so AGS and CGS specialists did not use beta blocker at all. The effect of lifestyle on IOP should be considered. So upside down, head down, position exercise or uh, sleeping in prone position or playing wind instrument may increase the intraocular pressure. Meditation, on, on the other hand, was reported to decrease the intraocular pressure. This is a, a brochure uh, for patient by Korean Glaucoma Society. You can see um, the recommendation to avoid bench press or head down position exercise. Consideration for IOP independent factors include not to lower the systemic pressure or not, not to high systemic blood pressure. And the circulation, peripheral blood circulation can be maintained in um, collaboration with internal medicine. And dietary supplement can be recommended even though it, is, uh, it doesn't have a high evidence level compared to IOP lowering treatment. Aberrant immunity, low BMI, low CSF pressure are known as a risk factor to be considered. So IOP lowering treatment is the mainstay in medical management of NTG. In early cases without risk factors, follow without medication can be an option. From the survey, PG analog or prostamide were the first choice, followed by bromonidine and others. The effect of lifestyle on IOP and the IOP independent factors can be considered. Thank you very much.